I'm going to go out in the hallway if you need to sneeze. All right. So let me check my battery here. All right. So there's two formulas that we're going to be dealing with. One is a Z score. Z is equal to X minus X bar over standard deviation. Or if you're dealing with a population, X minus mu over sigma. All right, so that's the z-score. We already talked about how to calculate that. And when we're talking about that in here, we're talking about the area to the left. All right, the z-score, when you look it up in the table, you're talking about the area to the left. about that in just a minute. Now Z gives you basically these numbers down here. So if you can take off the standard deviation part and just say negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, and that's 0. Now in this section, I, I don't know which one, I think we're in 7, right? 7, 1, and 7, 2. 7, 1 are the first part, well, I'll just write, there's two types of questions you're going to see in this, uh, in this section that we're going to cover. One, first type, uh, mu is equal to zero, and the standard deviation is equal to one, all right? And in that case, you're going to have a, you're going to have a, a curve that looks like this. 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. That's why I told you not to have anything on the bottom here. Okay? The other type is when you have x. What do I mean x? Well, instead of mu being 0, the mean is going to be 100, and the standard deviation is going to be 20. It's going to be 20, so therefore you've got a curve now that looks like 100, 120, 140, 100, or 80, and 60. Okay? Sorry about that swoosh. I don't know where it came from. But um, now, when you're dealing with this guy, I didn't even touch it. Okay, this thing's going quirky. I don't know why I did that. Well, anyway, when you're dealing with these type, you've got to worry about X. X is these numbers down here. X is going to be given like a score of, what is the percentage of a score of 115? Score is equal to 115. All right, when they give you something like that and they say, okay, scores 115, X becomes at 115. 115 is equal to X. Okay? So the numbers that they give you, like test scores or heights or whatever they're measuring, that's going to be considered X. Capiche? You don't have to worry about X up here because there is no X, it's just Z scores. You see what I'm saying? Z scores. Test scores. I like to say test scores because that's what most of them are. But here they give you, you still got to find the Z, you still got to look it up in the table or use your calculator, you still do all that. But there's two types of questions. All right? Now, also when you're working with these type of questions, you got to remember another formula, which is from this formula right here, and it's basically solving for X. And it's x is equal to oz plus mu. So there's two formulas in chapter 7 that you need to remember. There they are. Top one up there. Z score is equal to x minus mu over standard deviation, or x minus x bar over standard deviation. And then the second one you have to remember when you're given like test scores. And you're going to have, you, you need to remember Oz plus mu. And the reason I use Oz plus mu is because it's kind of hard if you do S, X bar, S, Z minus X bar, you can't remember. All right? But you can remember Oz plus mu, like Wizard of Oz. 
Okay? So that's why I use this one. And we'll cover that type of question in the future. Okay? Two more things that you have to remember going into Chapter 7 is table and calculator. Now, there's two ways to find the area under a curve with the uh, formal distribution. One is with the table A2 in the back of your book, or in the middle of your book. It's usually a cardboard table, and it's got like six charts on it. And the one that we're talking about is area. Okay, it'll say area at the top. And it'll say that the, the area is to the left of the mark. Okay, it'll say that at the top of the table. Now you have to be careful when you use the table. All right, most of you will probably use the calculator. One, because it's simple, and two, it's less complicated. Now, what I mean by less, well, less tedious, because when you're using the table, you have to remember to subtract more. When you're using the calculator, you just got to read from left to right and just put in the calculator from left to right. So some people are are getting away from teaching the table, but I still teach it just in case there's somebody that might want to use the table. If you want to get the table and you don't have a book, you can get it online, you can get it on your ebook, just go to the appendices, I'll show you how to do that, but just Google the table. Now the only thing about getting it and Type in your book. I don't know what book. Sullivan, I think. I think it's uh, Sullivan. Sullivan is the name of your book. Sullivan. So you would type in Z table Sullivan, and you should be able to get the table in the back of your book or in the middle of your book, wherever they put it, and you can print that out. Other than that, you can go to, I don't know where it is, but we'll look for it. Uh, pull up your handy dandy chapter contents well it used to be in here there it is and go to appendices A tables see that right there Let me pull this up by us anyway Breathe, breathe. I can't pull it up because we haven't got the required uh, W Flash player on our system. But y'all will have it because y'all stay up with stuff like that. But here in our county, there's only one teacher that uses this stuff, so they don't worry about it. But anyway, when you go to the appendices, just type on right here. Just go to appendices, A tables and look for the one that says area. Okay? Sorry about that. But am I surprised? No. All right. So that's that. Um, man, I'm going to have to Google it. Hold on. I'm going to do it for class. So let me Google it. Google. Googler. Googler. I hate to see what that represents. All right, and pull up Z table, and I'm going to type in Sullivan. Really? That's a little bit too long. Sullivan text. Sullivan probability. <laughs> Took you too literally on that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hit images. There they are. And I can't tell. I'm just going to pull one up. It's probably going to be the wrong. Well, that's the problem. They make them so small that it'd be better just to maybe I could pull up a PDF. There we go. There we go. Normal distribution. And if you look, it says. Area is under the standard normal curve on the what side of the mark? Left side. Everybody see that? 
Okay, I'm going to use this one, but the problem with just pulling up a table and not confirming whether it's your book or not is the rounding may be a little bit off. Okay? Like some tables, see this 0.5398? They may have it as 0 .53, 0 0.54. Okay, and they may just have it to two digits. So be careful. Usually four digits is safe. All right? But I'm just going to use this one. Is it just positive? It's just positive. Okay, so not negative. So they should have another one that says negative. Let me go to page three. Yep, yeah, there's the negative. No, that's... Wait a minute. Where is... I don't have a negative. Hold on a second. No, they don't have the negative side. That's unusual. Okay. Usually they have the positive and the negative. Well, we'll just have to go with what we got. Now, on your calculator, we're going to show you how to use it. It's going to be in second bars, and it's going to be called normal PDF, I think. I can't remember what it's called. I have to look and see. But anyway, how, how do we use these? Okay, well, remember that when you're talking about Z-scores, you round the two digits. So you need to write that down. Um, Z-score, two digits. So write that down. If you got a table, that's the place to write it. Z-score, you round to two decimal places. Why? Because here is the Z-score. Okay? Think of this as money. This is zero cents. This is 10 cent, 20 cent, 30 cent, 40 cent, 50 cent, 60 cent, up to a dollar, then a dollar ten, dollar twenty, dollar thirty. Everybody with me? All right, what's these tops? Well, this is your pennies. Everybody with me? So if I take a dollar ten cent and I add three cent to it, one three, what's a dollar ten plus three cents? A dollar thirteen, one point one three. That gives me an area right here. Area is four digits, four decimal places. So in this unit, if they give you four decimal places, they're giving you the area, then what do you have to find if they give you the area? Z-score. If they give you the Z-score in two decimal places, then they want you to find the what? Area. area. So you need to write that down. If they give you the Z-score, you need to find the area. Given Z, find area. Given Area, find Z. Now, what do they give you? Find the area of 64.43% or 0.6443. Well, you find the area of 0.6443, and that's the area. They give you the area, so you're finding the what? Z score. So, what's the Z score? 30 cent plus 7 cent. What's 30 cent plus 7 cent? 0.37. So that's your z-score, 0.37. Two decimal places. Two decimal places means z-score. Four decimal places, area. Now what did they say? Find the area of 94%. Well, what's 94% as a decimal? 0.9400. So find 0 0.9400. Well, wait a minute. It's between $93 and $0.94. Cent. $94. It's between $93 and $0.94 cent and $94.06. And so what's the deal? It's between the two, isn't it? Because both of them have six, right? Six cent. That makes $94. Six cent from here makes $94. So it's right in the middle. So that's going to be $1.50 plus 0 .055 because it's halfway between. But what if it was 
What if this was uh, 9493? What if that was 9493? Which one would be closer? Well, what's the difference between $94 and $94.06? Six cents. What's the difference between $94 and $93.93? And $93? Seven cents, Hubert. So which one's further? Which one's closest? 94.06 would be closer. So you use the 94.06, which would be 1.5 what? Six. Five, six. Okay. So that's basically how to use the table. Now, if you use the calculator, there's two. There's binomial PDF and inverse norm, and those are the two that you use when. And we'll show you how to do that as we do a problem. Okay. But that's kind of what we're getting into. 80% of your test is going to come from this section we're fixing to hit. Now, let's go ahead and hit the section and go from there. All right. Now, there's two things I need to show you before we get into chapter 7. I've already shown you the normal distribution. And out of all of chapter 7, 90% is going to be a normal distribution. Okay? But there's one called the uniform distribution. Now, can anybody tell me what a uniform distribution curve will probably be in relation to? The only thing that's uniform in our universe. What's that? The only thing we cannot change or manipulate. What is that? I heard, I heard, uh, huh? Time. Time. The only thing we cannot change or manipulate is time. Therefore, what's, why is this line straight? Why is that line straight? Somebody, somebody reach into your thinking cap. Why is that line straight? Why isn't it going all over the place? I'm as constant. Or you can predict. You can predict that this time tomorrow will be how many hours? 24 hours. It's not going to change, is it? It's not going to stop. All right? So that's why there's no variation in that line. That's why it's called a uniform distribution. Most of your, most of your problems with uniform distribution will be with time. Now, let's go over a little bit of algebra reviews. The area of a rectangle <coughs> equals what? Length times the what? Or base times the what? Height. Okay? I'm going to use base times the height because it looks a little bit better here. So here's the base and here's the height. Now we already know, if I spelled that right, um, we already know what the area is in that curve, in that, in that box. What is the area of probability? What's the highest probability you can go to? Zero to what? One. So the area in this rectangle is 1.000. The reason I wrote four decimal places is so you know that it's what? This area. Okay? All right. So, usually the question is going to be giving you something and it's going to ask you something like, um, most of the time, blah, 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 the psychology teacher's class uh, ranges from zero to 50 minutes. Zero, yeah, zero to 50 minutes. Zero minutes. To 50 minutes. Okay? What is the probability that the teacher will let you go after 45 minutes? So you go 45 minutes and question mark. Everybody with me? All right, first of all, you got to find the height of this, of this uh, rectangle. Can anybody tell me how to find the height of that rectangle? Well, what do we know? Tell me what we know. 
You know, there he is, and plug it in. One is equal to, I'm going to use base times height. Okay, what else we know? What is the base? 50. So one is equal to 50 times h. Now find the height. Divide by what? Divide by 50. Divide by 50. So the height is equal to 1 50th. Everybody with me? Okay, so now I take my, that's the first part, find the height. So write that down. First part of the uniform distribution, find the height. Second part is once you find the height, take your handy dandy highlighter, and I'm going to use Verdeck. And we're going to highlight the area that we want. Because if I highlight it, then you'll be able to tell what to do next. Now somebody tell me what I do next. If I want the area of that green rectangle. Five. Five times one fiftieth. Good. One person pay attention. That's right. So, the area of the green triangle or rectangle is equal to the base, which is 5, times 150. I'm sorry. 1 over 50. 1 over 50. I didn't erase it because it takes the act of Congress to erase on this thing. 1 over 50, which would be 5 over 50. Okay, I'm going to show you all a trick I learned in the war here. 1 over 10, which is equal to 0 0.1, which is equal to 10 what? Percent. So there's a 0.10 probability or a very low chance that you're going to that you're going to get out of class five minutes before class. Very, very, very what? Very low. Now, if I give you 10 problems from Chapter 7, one will be this. So you might want to make sure you know how to do it. There will be a couple in your, in your homework. If I give you a test tomorrow, which will be coming up soon, um, that's make sure you can do that. And here's your first part. And the first part is what? Find the what? Find the height. Second part is once you find the height, find the area of your new rectangle. I got a question on that. Okay? So now, let's cover the rest of chapter 7. Area under a curve. Let's say that I give you a problem, and the problem says find the area zero, one, two, negative one, negative two, and it says find the area Area can also be percentage. It can also be a decimal. It can also be a percentile. It can also be probability. What do I mean by that? Find the area. Find the percentage. Find the decimal. Find the percentile. Find the probability. It can be all of those. So when it says the area, it can mean, area can mean all of these words right here. Okay? Of 2.3. Now 2.3. Hmm. 2.3. First thing you do, 
after it asks the question, the first thing you do is you draw a sketch. Okay, there's two types of students. There's a student that goes, okay, I'm going to draw a sketch. Then there's a student that says, I don't need a sketch. The ones that say, I don't need a sketch are the ones that cry and whine when they get problems wrong on the test and I don't give them credit for them. Okay? Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. All right. Draw a sketch. After you draw a sketch, you need to plot the point common sense. Plot the point for common sense. And the common sense comes from the empirical rule. I always have a problem with sense. Is it spelled with a C or an S? Isn't it S? S. I don't know why I want to put a C in there. Up until my second year of college, I spelled divide, D-E-V-I-D-E. -E. And you know what's, what, what, what broke me of doing that? One of the math professors up there. Well, Hubert, how do you divide? And ever since then, I never spelled it that way again. <laughs> because he's, he was being smart alecky, he? but he was a good guy. He wasn't like Dr. Harden. <laughs> and he just grunted. All right, after you plot the point, common sense, use the empirical rule. Okay, here I'm going, I'm going to use it. I'm going to take a yellow, I mean a, a blue pen, and I'm going to say 2.3. Where is 2.3? Positive 2.3. It's right about there. Okay, and I'm going to put a little arrow here, and I'm going to put 2.3. And then I'm going to say, okay, well, my empirical rule says that this is 2.5, this is 13.5, this is 34, 34, and 13.5. So I want somebody to add all that up. You don't have to add it up because to here, it's 97.5. Okay, so if this is 97.5, the empirical rule states that this is 97.5. If that's 97.5, then what do you think this is right here? Somebody guess. I'm going to say 98%. So I'm going to say it's about 98%. Now, I have no idea if that's correct or not. But when my dadgum computer or my table spits out 0.9825, then I know I'm one. I'm right. But if my calculator spits out 0.5732, I know I'm wrong. Okay? Because my common sense empirical rule, if I add all those up at 2, I know that's 97.5, I think. Somebody check me. I think it's 97.5. Then this little area right here is 2.5, and I'm going to just say, well, that's maybe, you know, 0.5. So I'm going to add that to that, and I'm going to say it's 98%. So how do you check it? Well, you got to use your table. Because what your table is saying is I need to look up 2.30 in my table. Now, those of you that have a table can look it up, all right? Now, I need to know... The area up to 2.3. So that means the area is to the left. So that's the area I'm looking for. Now, those of you that remember your number line from, from your algebra, this side of the number line has an error head on it. And that error head is called negative what? Negative infinity. What's this error here called? Positive infinity. So if I want to know the area on the left, then I need to know from negative infinity to 2.3, don't I? Which way do we read? Left or right, unless you're from the Middle East, my salama. If you're from the Middle East, then you do it some other way, and I don't know how to do it, okay? If you read it, if you're from the United States, or most places right to left to right, you go from negative infinity to 2.3. So get your calculators out. 
If you got a calculator, if you got a table, use your table. But I'm going to pull out the calculator. Well, let me show you the table right quick. Let me pull the table up. There's the table. And where is 2.3? So let me move this thing out of the way. 2.3. That's $2.30. $2.30. Thirty cent and zero point nine eight what? Point nine eight nine three. I was about right, wasn't I? Common sense wise, I'm smart. Point nine eight nine three. So write that down. Everybody write that down. Point nine eight. Well, Hubert, why you picked the first column? Well, what is the first column? Zero cent. So what's two dollars and thirty cent plus zero cent? Two dollars and thirty cent. Two point three. It's pretty simple. So there you go, 9893. Now let's use our handy dandy calculator. Now I gotta find I don't use calculator every dag dumb day, so I don't I'm not on the calculator drill team. Some of y'all were on it. So second bars. And I think it's I can always forget these two. I think it's normal PDF, but we're fixing to find out. So hit a normal PDF, let me do it right quick. X value is 2.3. And enter, 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 and enter. Okay. It's the second one. Second bars, normal CDF. Lower is negative infinity, which will be negative 9999999. Just whatever you want to, but at least carry it to four digits. Sure, it's come up Upper is 2.3. Hold on a second. Hold on. Enter, 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 and there it is, 0.9893. Now, if you have an older calculator, it's probably going to just do the parentheses, and that's fine. I'll show you how to do it. Let me, let me go to my handy-dandy whiteboard. If you've got normal CDF and they give you just use parentheses, if you type second bars normal CDF, it's going to give you normal CDF and then it's going to do a parenthesis like that. Then you type in negative, use the one down at the bottom, the negative in parenthesis. Don't use the subtraction symbol. I don't like that. All right, minus 99999, which represents what? Negative infinity, Hubert. Thank you, class. And then type in a comma, and then 2.3. And then hit enter, and it should give you 0.98, whatever it gave us. Was it 9892 or 989.27, which is 9893? Y'all get that? Good. So that's the two ways that you can use. But, but here's another question on the test. What if I say, what if the question says, what, what amount of students made above 2.3? What's the answer? Well, it's the complement of the yellow. If you want to find the right-hand side, the right-hand side is equal to 1 minus the left-hand side, the complement. Right-hand side is equal to 1 minus the what? Left-hand side, 1 minus 0.9893, which would be dang old 0 .1, 0 0.1, 0, 0.1, Somebody help me out. Yeah. 0, 0.1, 0, 0.7. Remember, the blue is point nine. I mean, the yellow is point nine eight nine three. What's the area under the whole curve? One. So one dollar minus ninety nine cent is what? One cent. So the red is the complement of that number to a dollar. Now. Why would you want to know the right-hand side? Whenever you see the words what? Greater than? 
greater than or more, greater than slash more. Okay? Whenever you want to find the right hand side, you're going to see that greater than. Okay? What scores or what 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 percent of students scored greater than 540? Well, greater than, that's the right hand side of 540. Well, that's another question, but that's how you do that. Okay, so so far in chapter seven, there's uniform distribution. Then there is finding the left hand side of the mark. Then there is finding the what? Right hand side of the mark, and the right hand side is the complement to the left hand side. How are we doing, Aisley? Good. Good. All right. Now this one, they gave us an area. I mean, it gave us a what? A Z score, and you find the area. Everybody with me? So you need to write that down. Given Z score, find the area. Well, let's turn it around. Let's give the give. Let's let's have a question where the information given is the area, and you find the Z score. So. Find the z-score given the area is 0 0.6500. First thing you do, draw what? Just draw a sketch. Number one, draw a sketch. Okay, let's see in there. Draw a sketch. The empirical rule states that at this point I'm at 50%, right? And what's 50 plus 34? 84, Hubert. So that point is at 84%. That point is at 50. Everybody with me? If you didn't learn the empirical rule, then you have no idea what I'm talking about. All right, so let's think. What's the difference between 50 and 84? Well, 34. What's half of 34? 17. Right? Yes. So what's 17 plus 60? 67, Hubert. That's right, class. So 67 is right there. What do we need? 65. Well, let's just drop it down. This, this, is, called, this is called interpolation. Where you take the middle of the middle of the middle of the middle and you get closer and closer to what you want. But right now we're pretty close. I doubt we're going to be, we'd have to take it down a few more notches. But what's half of 17? Eight? So that'd be 58 in the middle. Right here is 58. 58%. So now we're down to, let's see, this is 1, this is 0.5, this is 0.25. Okay, so I was what's let's say 58 to 67. Half of that is what four. So that'd be 62 percent. 62 percent would be right here. That'd be 0.75. 62 percent is 0.75. And then half of what's 62 to 67? What is that five? Half of that is 64.5. So I'm gonna say. Between 0.75 and, and, I'm sorry, that's wrong, 0.75, I'm sorry, I messed up, it's not 0.75, that would be 0.25, 0.3, 0.3, 3 something, 0.35, so I'm going to say it's around, I'm just about 0.4, okay, so by my interpolation, I say that the, the z-score is going to be around 0.4, okay, around. So, how do we find it? Well, we know that this area that we're asking for is point what? Six five? I'm gonna just draw it right here. So I'm gonna take my blue marker and I'm just gonna draw a blue line right in there because I know this is sixty-two percent and that's fifty-eight percent, so I know it's gonna fall right in here. And I know that blue area is point six five zero zero, all right? 
You're fine with me? So, I can do two things. I can look up 6500 in my handy dandy table. So I go to my handy dandy table. And I look up 0.65. And I've lost the handy dandy table. Have I? There it is. Folks. I'm waiting for it. Oh well. I guess it's not going to come up. Has anybody got a table with them from their book? There. Okay. Whatever. All right. Point. Let's say point six five zero zero. Point six five zero zero. There we go. Okay, somebody tell me what's closer to $65. $64.80 or $65.17? $65.17. So your answer is 0.3 what? 0.39. What did I say it was? It's a miracle. All right, so 0.39 is our actual answer. So our answer is... 0.39. Now we take it in our handy dandy calculator and we say second bars inverse norm. And it's going to ask you, it's going to have a set of parentheses or one parenthesis, and you type in 0 0.6500 and enter. Somebody do that for me. Tell me what 30. you get when you type in inverse norm. Point three eight five three point so it's three point point three eight five three, which is it's point five. what? Three nine. It's a miracle. Somebody tell me what the complement of is of 0 0.6500. 0 0.3500, zero zero. Hubert. That's right, class. So the percentage of students above 0 0.39 is 0 0.3500, 35%. Now later on, that 0.39 is going to change to a test score. Or it's going to change into a cutoff score, getting into a college, or it's going to cut, it's going to change into a temperature or something. Okay. Right now it's just a Z score. So again, the area is on the left hand side, the complement is on the right hand side. Everybody with me? This time you were given a area and you had to find the what? Z score. Now let me throw a twist in it. Let me give you a question that you can relate to first. Let's say this is Anderson, which is want to be Greenville. And let's say this is Greenville, which is want to be Atlanta. And this is Spartanburg, which is want to be Atlanta. And you want to go, you know that Anderson to Spartanburg I'm just going to say is 45 miles for easy math. And you know from Greenville to Spartanburg is 15 miles. So what is the distance from Anderson to Greenville? Okay, it's not supposed to. It's, you know, it's not supposed to have a meltdown. It's supposed to be easy. Easily. What is the distance between Anderson and Greenville? Thirty. What'd you say? Thirty. What you did? Tell me exactly what you did. You took the smaller from the what? The larger. You took the smaller from the total, right? And that gave you what was in between right here. All right? Smaller, I meant 
the total minus the smaller gives you what's left or what's in the middle. Everybody, everybody agree with that? Okay. Now remember that when you see this next problem, which is area. Okay. What is the blank between 1.2 and 2.1? Now, why did I put blank? Well, that could be area. It could be what else? What's the five things that I told you? Area. Percentage, percentile, what else? Probability, what else? Decimal. What? Decimal. Decimal. It could be one of those four things, so you put whatever you want to there. Okay? So what's the first thing we're going to do? Draw what? Draw a sketch. And that's for 90% of y'all, because one of y'all is not going to do it, because what? You don't need to. So I'm going to take my red pen and I'm going to do 1.2. Well, 1.5 is about right there. 1.25 would be right in there. So I'm going to put 1.2 right there. And that's that area. And then 2.1 I'm going to do in blue. Let's see, there's one. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to put 1.2 right there. I'm, I'm having brain bubbles. This is the drugs. I'm sorry. I just get on. I just watch LAPD and I just want to go out and buy all the drugs I can get. 1.2. Really? 1.2. B. There's 1.2. 1.25 to here, 1.2 to right here. Sorry about that. And then blue is 2. Point what? 2.1, well, we said 2.1 would be somewhere in there. So somebody tell me what the big one is. The big one is 2.1, right? Now, if I take the, if I take the 2.1 area and I subtract 1.2 area, what will that leave me with? That will leave me with this yellow area, which is the area between 1.2 and what? And 2.1. Remember, the larger area, which is the Anderson to Spartanburg, the total minus the what? The smaller area, which was Anderson to Grand Warrior, Rebel Spartanburg. It doesn't matter. So, do that. Now, if you had a calculator, you do from negative 9999 to 1, 2. And then you do negative 999 to 2.1. Or what else could you do on your calculator? This is the two part. With the calculator, all you have to do is from 1.2 to what? 2.1. I want somebody to give me the red area from 9999, negative 9999. I'll put it down here. Negative... Nine 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 nine. Somebody give me that from negative nine 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 to one point two. Tell me what you get. The red area is what? What's well, gonna be? There's fifty percent, eighty four percent, eighty five percent. What is? It? Eight eight four nine. Point eight eight four nine. Somebody give me the blue area, which will be over 
2.1. Okay, somebody subtract those two, and I'm going to write in yellow. I know somebody's going, I can't see, I can't see. Okay, somebody give me, what is that, 0 0.09 something, what is it? 72. 0.0972. So the yellow is 0 0.0972. Now somebody go over to your calculator and do from 1.2 to 2.1 and somebody tell me what you get. 0, 9, what? So you can do both on the calculator however you want to. Now on your table you would just get this right here. Table would give you this. You would have to do that with the table. You don't have to do it with the calculator. You do it with the table. This is what you would do with the calculator. Brenda? Okay, so now we got, we got three type problems in this first section. Well, four type problems in this first section. Let's go over it right quick. We've got one, we've got uniform distribution. Two, we've got two type problems in here. Given area, find the what? The score. And remember, the right hand side is equal to 1 minus the what? Left hand side. Okay, remember that with, you know, whatever area they're asking for. Or, oh, I'm sorry. The other one is given the C score. Find the area. Okay, and we learned that you can do both of those with the calculator and the tape, whichever. Three, I'm just going to say between. Make sure you can find the area between two Z scores. Now, this is the first part, and I, the reason I say the first part, usually the way they have done it in past probability books is they do the first type questions in 7.1 and the second type questions in 7.2. But I'm scared to say that because we changed books because there wasn't anything broken. So if there's nothing broke, you try to fix it, right? And we changed books for no reason. Okay? So I'm not going to go there. So the second type problem, the second section, we're going to be doing this, we're going to be doing this, and we're going to be doing this. But the difference is... These are not going to have this. These are going to have mu is equal to 100 and standard deviation is equal to 10, which is going to throw in x, okay? meaning that instead of finding just the area and the z-score, you're going to find the area and the z-score, but then you're going to have to transfer that z-score into x because let's say about if we're talking about IQ test, okay? let's say 30 percent of the population is above 150. Okay, all right. What is the probability that, or what's the population? What percentage of the population is going to be between? Uh, 37, you're going to have to change 37 into a Z score, then look it back up. 
okay, or type it in your calculator as a z-score. If you type in 37 in the inverse or whatever, uh, the uh, normal CDF, it's going to give you like 99.9%, and that's not right. It's thinking you're typing in a z-score. You have to transfer the x into a z-score. So if you're given x, you got to change it to a z-score. And if you're given a z-score, you got to transfer it into what? Back into x because they say blah, 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 blah. What is the test score that represents the 50th percentile? Well, the 50th percentile... You don't know what the you don't know what the test score is. You got to find the z score, find the blah blah blah, find everything, and then put it in, plug it into that formula and find the test score. Okay, so x is going to be your test scores, or your heights, or your weights, or whatever you're measuring. So let's find one of those, and then we'll apply everything we've learned today to that type of question. The page. We understand. Okay, good. So then our class goes by a whole lot better when y'all interact with me. Thank you. All right. Move this thing away. Let me just get rid of it. Go to the homework. That's one away. Away. What chapter is this? Seven? No, I need to go to home. And what is seven point one? All right, write that question down. It says, assume, I can't make it bigger, I'm sorry. Unless, no, I can't change it over here. Assume that a random bear, blah, 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 mean of 45 and a standard deviation of 10. Boom, draw a picture. 45, standard deviation of 10. Be sure to draw a normal curve with the area corresponding. They want to know the probability of test scores below 42. Equal to or below 42. So the first thing you want to do is draw a picture. Which one? It is question number one. No.
So 45 would be in the middle. 45 plus 10 is 55. 55 plus 10 is 65. 45 minus 10 is 35. 35 minus 10 is 25. Now, if you have one of those pictures like I had that has the C scores up under it, that'll kind of help you. Now, they want to know what what's the probability of a score being below 42? Now, I know it doesn't say anything about score. Where, where, Hubert, where do you get the score? I'm using the score because what are y'all? Students. And what is the most important thing to you as students? Test scores. And if I call 45 a test score or an average or whatever, as far as test goes, you'll latch on to it as being X instead of being a Z score. That's why I'm doing it. All right? It's a dang old teaching thing. All right. So I'm going to take my blue marker, and I'm going to mark 42. Okay, 35 to 45 is 10, half 10, so that means 40 is right here. There's 40. What's halfway between 40 and 45? 42.5, right? So I'm going to say the middle right here is 42. Okay. So somebody tell me, common sense wise, what my answer is going to be. It doesn't have to be a number, it can be a sentence. Tell me in a sentence or a number, number sentence or what, what my answer is going to be using the empirical rule. That means that's not rhetorical. I want y'all to interact with me. That's what I'm asking y'all to do. Empirical rule, what does 45 represent? Sorry, what? And somebody tell me, common sense wise, in a sentence, what my answer is going to be. Do you mean which graph? No. Oh. What my answer is going to be in a sentence, in a mathematical sentence or a regular sentence, it's going to be less than 50%. Why? Because 42 is less than 45, and 45 by the empirical rule is what? 50%. I'm trying to tap into your common sense. Okay? Your answer is going to be less than 50%. Alright? So which one of these pro which one of these pictures show the area to the left of 42? C. C. So your answer would be C. Now, I don't really care about the picture, but I want you to draw a picture. But what's the next step? 42 doesn't tell you squat. So what do you have to do to 42? Change it into a z-score. So plug it in the formula for z-score. What did I tell you the test scores were? What letter? Test scores are x. So what's the formula? X minus what? D score is equal to X minus what? X bar or mu over standard deviation. So that's going to be equal to 42 minus 45 over 10, which is equal to 42 minus 45 is what? Negative 3. V3, yeah, negative 3 over 10 which is equal to negative 0.3. And please don't use a calculator to do 3 over 10. If you do, I will be very disappointed. Okay? All right. So, my z-score is 0.3. So we need to find the area from negative infinity to negative 0.3. So I'm going to put down here negative 
9999 comma negative 0.3 because 0.3 is right there. So somebody do that for me. And like I said, I think it's going to be, well, actually, you could get really down and dirty and do the interpolation, and you could get it really close. Well, I know that that's, let's say, this is, that was, that's, this is right here is 34, and that's 17 plus 16. 17 plus 16 is what, 33? Right? 33, and then half of 17 is a 33 plus eight. I was gonna say 41 percent. That's rough. What did y'all get? Three, eight, two, one. Okay, three eight, 38 percent. Three eight what? Two one. Two one. Somebody confirm that? Yeah. Okay. So it's 38 percent. I said 41 percent or 43 percent. I don't forgot what I said. Okay. That's it. Somebody tell me the complement of point three eight two one. Six one seven nine. It's a complement. One minus point three eight two one. So that would say what about the test score above forty two? Test score above forty two would be point six one seven nine. So let's go ahead and put that on here for you in red. The complement on this side is point, y'all check me, 6179, see if I did it right. And what does that red area represent? That red area is test scores X above what? 42. Somebody check 3821 and 0.6179. Make sure it comes out to be 1. Okay, so that's the type question you're going to see. That's the second type question, within the, or the different questions, because they take away the 0 and the 1, and they just give you X. Let's try it here. got scourged and he's going to quit. That's all right. A lot of people quit. All right. Y'all settle down easily. There we go. All right. Draw that one. I'm not draw it. But yeah, sketch it. I want you to sketch it. It is blah, 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 blah. Mean of 50 and standard deviation of 7. Find the 90th percentile. picture.
All right, draw a picture. Main of 50, 57, 64, 43, and 43 minus 7 is what? I can't subtract what's the flip. 30 what? 36. Thank you. All right. Well, what is the 90th percentile? Well, this is the 50th, and this is 84. If this is 84, and this is 97, hmm, 86 to 97, or 84, sorry, 84 to 97. What's 84 to 97? 13? Half of 13 is what? Seven, right? Government work. So this is 81 or 91 percent right here, correct? Everybody with me? I'm just, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, creating the space shuttle here. I'm not taking it down to the 10,000th of a place. I'm just trying to do some common sense thinking. All right, so that's 91 percent. All right. Or 91 is right there. That's 91% right here. So 90% would be a little bit to the left, right? Okay, a little bit to the left. I'm going to put it right about here. Now, 90%, let me erase that 91 because that's kind of a confusing place. It should be up here. 91% is right there. Okay, so halfway between 57 and 64 is what? Three and a half? Everybody with me? So 91 represents 60 as far as the test score. So I'm going to say 57, 58, 59. I'm going to say 59 is going to be close to our answer. The test score of 59 represents the 90th percentile. Now that's based on what? Common sense and the empirical rule. Okay, so now... We're going to go through and find out what it is. But first, we got to change, we got to, we got to do the inverse norm to find out the 90th percentile, and that gives us a Z score, right? So if somebody do, since they want the 90th percentile, 9000, somebody do second bars inverse norm. Parentheses 0 0.9000, and as far as the Z score goes, hold on a second. I'm going to do a Z score in my head. I mean, common sense. We said this is 2. Point, or 1.5, so I'm going to say between 1.5. If that's uh, three in between 1.5, that's going to be 0 0.33, 0 0.33. So I'm going to say it's around 1.4. 1.4, 1.39, 1.4. Somebody tell me what you get with the inverse norm 90. What do you get? Shall I get 1.28? Yeah, that's here. What'd you 1.28. 1.28. I was a little bit off. I'm sorry. Okay, so you put 1.28 in here, right? No. Because what did they start with? They started with test scores. So what are you going to end with? You're going to end with a test score. So now you've got to change that Z score into a test score. How do you do that? Well, you're given Z. You've got the mean. You've got to use odds plus mu. So I've got to change 1.28 into a test score. So X, my test score, is going to be equal to 7 Oz plus 1.28 plus 50. So somebody crank that out. So somebody tell me what that test score is. What did I say it was going to be common sense wise? Around 59. What'd you come out with? 
58.96. Aren't y'all impressed? Actually, it's not that difficult to do this. To do the common sense, you just have to sit there and draw a picture and think about it. But what happens is, I get these students, especially in the fall, with all these people that graduate high school that are already rocket scientists, you know, the ones that come out of 12th grade and they already know everything there is to know in the universe. They, they will not draw a picture. They will not draw, they will not do this stuff right here. And then they'll put down, well, I got X is equal to 24. And they'll put 24 down and swear that that's the right answer. And they have no common sense whatsoever by looking at the picture. None. So it helps to draw that picture. Even if you just haphazardly say, oh, well, it's going to be between 57 and 60, that still gives you a little bit of insurance on your answer, especially if you get an answer of 26. You know something is what? Wrong. Okay? And that's basically the, the problems that we covered today, and I know it's to what time y'all get out? 2.30? Uh, 2.20 or 2.30? 2.30. 2.30. Um, we'll go over a couple more because the, because this is 80% of your test. Okay, unit 2 test, the unit 3 test is 80%. So it's not going to hurt us to go over these because we're going to go over some more. Um, I usually give two days to go over these because, yep, I'm going to say probably this is the hardest for some, of you, some students to get out of all the sections is this section right here. Okay, so let's do another one. I've never seen this question before. I was kind of scared to do questions I ain't never seen before. A through E, no, we're not doing one of those. Well, okay, we'll do it. The mean incubation time for a type of fertilized egg, da 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 da. It's 23 days. Suppose that the mean uh, uh, normal distributed standard deviation is two days. Okay, first I want you to draw a picture of it, I guess. I've never seen this question before. I've never seen this group view, view graph A, view graph B. I've never seen that. Okay, so let's draw a picture. Questions in during after they bring out the new book, they keep adding questions. Kind of like buying a brand new car and having to take it back to the daggum mechanic shop because it ain't got all the bugs out of it. Anyway, blah blah blah. 23 is right here, and standard deviation of two, so that's going to be 25, 27, and 21, and 19. Have a good one. 19, 21, 23, 25, 27. Draw a model that describes egg. I guess you just look for the one that matches it. I don't know what these look like because, like I said, I've never seen this question before. Okay, 23, 25. Nope. 23, 25, 27, 23, 21, 19. That looks good. AFB. Well, at least I got that much right. All right. Find and interpret probability that a randomly selected egg hatches in less than 19 days. All right. By the empirical rule, What's our common sense answer? That's not for y'all to be silent. Y'all are supposed to answer it right off. What's this percentage right here by the empirical rule? Huh? Dig in? I heard it. What? 2.5. Good. Easily, y'all let me down. 2.5%. Thank you. All right. So 
but in less than 19 days, we know our answer is going to be around 2.5%. But now we got to find it exactly. So you've got to change 19 into a what? Well, you know it's x, so you can't change it into x. You got to change it into a z-score. Good. Y'all know there's only two letters, right? X and z. Good. So 19 minus what? Minus 23 over 2. 19 over 20, minus 23 is negative what? Negative 4? Y'all help me. I have no idea. All I hear is mumbling. Thank y'all for being interactive. Negative 2. So somebody go in your calculator and do the normal CDF for negative 9999 to negative 2. And tell me what you get. We said it was going to be 0 .0250 by common sense. 250. Point zero two five zero. But what did it come out down to the nitty gritty in your calculator? What did it come out to be? Point zero two two eight. Point zero two two eight. And that's what you're going to type in. Point zero two two eight. And then you'll feel good about yourself. Point zero two two eight. See there? And you won't have to wear sunglasses in the gym. Don't lie. You know you've seen those guys in the gym. You know that you've seen them. You're idiots. Run as fast as you can. All right. Interpret. Find the interpret. Let's see. Interpret this probability. Select the correct choice. Blah blah blah. In every group. Of fertilized eggs of 2.3, which is two eggs, will hatch in less than 19 days. Now, it does not does it say doesn't say anything about rounding up. Okay, here round to the nearest integer. The average portion of blah 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 one of fertilized eggs would be expected to hatch. Alright, B is not it. Why is B not it? Because it's got too much big words in it and average proportion of the way of hatch. It's just bull crap. Alright? So B in this question is bull crap. Alright? Just knock it out. We know that less than 90 days and less than 90, 19 days and less than 19 days, we know those are applicable, don't we? Why do you know those are applicable? Because it's in the first part of the question, B. It's in right there, less than 19 days. So, in every group of 100, you could say that two eggs will hatch in less than 19 days, but they're not saying anything. I don't know. I, I kind of like this one because you can round to the, well, it says round to the nearest age, randomly selected in every group. I don't like the word, I don't like will hatch. Why do I not like that? I'm sorry, what? It's definite. You don't like definity. You do not like definite answers in probability. So I'm going to go with C. Uh, two. C. 
See? And I don't like to put smokestacks on my truck. C. Find and interpret the probability that a randomly selected fertilized egg takes over 27 days to hatch. Draw a picture. Y'all missing one in easily. Where is she at? I don't know. She's probably in a ditch somewhere. I didn't even realize she wasn't here, Jason. <laughs> well, she never does say anything, but neither do y'all, so I guess that's why I didn't know she wasn't there. That's all right. I don't like interaction anyway. It's, over, it's overrated. I like for the class to drag out as long as it can. It's more fun. Twenty three, twenty five, twenty seven, twenty one, nineteen, and this is Find the probability that a random will take over 27 days to hatch. So again, 2.5% is probably going to be the same answer. Somebody give me the first answer. What was it? Point what? 0228? <laughs> so it's going to be the same answer because they worded the question different. One's less than and one's greater than, but it's the same answer. So you just type in the same thing. I don't know why they would do that, but maybe they're trying to get you to see something. 0 0.0228. Okay, which one is the one that has too much words in it and doesn't make any sense? B. Which one is definite? A or C? C is definite, so your answer is A. Two. Therefore, you don't have to put too much makeup on your face and be lucky on the look. Find the interpret the probability that a randomly selected fertilized egg is between 21 and 23. How many percent by the empirical rule? 21 and 23. Somebody tell me right quick. 34%. So in your mind, 0 0.3400 is the answer. So you go down here and you say, okay, common sense is 0 0.3400. Now, you go over here. Between how many? Okay. 21 minus 23 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is what? Negative 1. So somebody in your calculator tell me what the area is between negative 1 and 0. Four decimal places because it's area. Point three four one three. So that means thirty four eggs are going to be between whatever and whatever. So point three four point three four one three. And you're starting to feel good about yourself. Which one has too many words? Which one has too many words? A has too many words. Sounds like a Philadelphia lawyer, so you don't pick A. Which one is definite? B is definite, so since A is too wordy and B is definite, what's your final answer? And 34 eggs. I have to type in the box twice to get it to work. Some Russians. 
Would it be unusual for an egg to hatch in less than 17 days? Okay? Now remember, anything unusual is going to be outside of the normal area. Outside the normal area, there's the normal area by empirical rule. Normal is going to fall between two what? Two standard deviations, Hubert. That's right. So this is normal. So anything outside of this is what? Unusual or not normal. Or not normal. Put N-O-R-M-A-L and then put a... And then over here. Normal. It's not normal. So let's read the question. The probability of an egg hatching in less than 17 days is what? It's going to be very, very small because you got to go one more standard deviation. 17 days is down here. So now you got to go 17 minus 23 is what? That's negative 3, right? So what is 999? Negative 999 to negative 3. What does that come out to be? Wait a minute. What's 17 minus 23? 6. 6 divided by 2. Okay, negative 3. I'll make sure. Somebody tell me what the probability is of negative 9999 to negative 3. Give me four digits. Shouldn't take that long. Zero, zero, one, three. Zero, zero, one, three. You got a 0% chance of a fertilized egg happening, egg hatching, or whatever. Okay? You got a 0% chance of that happening. Okay? Is this spot, which is down here, is this in the green area? No. As Medea would say, hail to the no. It's way out there. It's three standard deviations outside. So no, it's not normal. So therefore, it's going to be what? What's the opposite of normal? Unusual. Okay? Also, what is this area? This ain't even zero. This ain't even one cent. It's zero cents. It's 0.13 of a cent. So it's not even equal to five cent, is it? So if it's not if it's not five cent or above, it is unusual. So let's and that that last question right there, E, that is a very normal standardized test question about something being unusual or being normal. The probability, where did this, the probability of an egg hatching in less than 17 days is 0.0013. So it would be unusual because the probability is what? Less than 0.05. And see, you just answered all those questions and you feel good about yourself. Who's got questions on that one? If you can do that problem, A through E, you can pretty much handle any section and, and any question in 7.2. Alright, who's got questions? Alright, so now y'all can work on 7.1 and 7.2. Now we will have homework day for 7.1 and 7.2 because I got to make sure y'all know how to do that. So y'all get out of here and have a good weekend or a good, what day is it? Tuesday. I'll see y'all Thursday. Okay? Okay.